Welcome to another Linux episode. Some time ago I found some YouTube videos showing some vintage DOS games that brought back some nice memories like Monkey Island and they had the nice soundtrack that I never realized. And while I was already googling for this Roland MT32 MIDI kind of things, I found also that there is some open source emulation for that um, called MUND. And while of course having this vintage hardware is also nice, it's standing around, I can't travel with this and so on. So I thought I should simply package this MUND Roland MIDI emulation for the T2 Linux of us. And that's what, what we are doing today here. So I also wanted to shortly show creating a T2 package. This will go very fast here. Basically, I just copy another uh, package as base. Doesn't really matter what. I copied here some audio package, but again, doesn't really matter. You can just uh, copy anything or start from scratch. This T2 package format is actually quite neat. It's just key value pairs, so it's like array assignments. We basically have just the metadata there of uh, texture information, version, uh, website, license, version number, and download URL and such. And the T2 build scripts will fetch the source automatically and uh, run automatics, like figuring out if it's a make file or auto configure stuff or CMake and, and all the other modern flavors. So I quickly get some information, fill in the key value pairs, and then we are going to see how this emulation thing actually is going to work. This may look like a little bit of work, but compared to other distributions, this is really extremely little. Other distributions may have much larger control files. Um, they may even have a tarball with all the patches, um, data and control files archived in and such. And T2 is extremely simple metadata with scripts, so it's actually extremely little metadata information that package maintainers fill in here to create such a package. So after everything is filled in, it's time to download and build the package for the first time. Let's see how this goes today. And no surprise, uh, why should it work on the first time? Of course it fails with something. Turns out it needs Qt5 and I only have Qt3 and Qt4 on this Lenovo T470S test store. Not the greatest Qt fun, so let's emerge Qt5 first. So actually quite a bit of time later because internet was a bit slow here today and also the dual core Intel tablet class uh, CPU took an hour or so to think about and compile the Qt package. So let's try it again with Qt5 installed. If we are lucky it just goes through in the second try. Yay, it built. Lucky us. So let's check out what kind of binary we even need to start for this. It is also a nice thing about T2, it tracks all the modified and installed files automatically, so the maintainer does not need to hard code any names or whatsoever. So I obviously don't have any DOS disk games with me, so I found some MIDI dump of the game somewhere. And let's see how it sounds through this emulator and probably how I never heard Monkey Islands before. Let's see how that goes.
So this actually sounded quite amazing, certainly much better than what I remember from the DOS game area. No idea how original that is for all your hardcore DOS gamers to decide and compare back and forth. But I also copied some Windows MIDI file and was curious how that will sound. So let's play this famous Canyon thing and see how that goes as well. Okay, so while it did actually sound quite okay, I remember some Roland and Yamaha sound canvas MIDI modules sounding way better, richer, but this MT32 is also before the general MIDI area, so there are certainly many instruments missing or the mapping is different. Let's also try this even more fancy Windows Passport MIDI. Okay, so there the lack of general MIDI is really showing. Certainly many instruments are missing and played with the wrong voice. But for that we also have timidity in the open source world, although it's not as maintained anymore. And I downloaded there some relatively full featured also open source, I think GPL sound font for that. So let's take a look and see how the two Windows songs, Canyon and Passport, sound with timidity.
case it was obviously way better. Let's also compare Kenyon with Timidity and the former MT32 emulation. I also exported the songs to WAV files to embed them without any analog conversion loss into this video for you to enjoy. Why vintage games sound way more authentic with MT32 emulation, general MIDI files obviously sound way better with a proper sound font and timidity. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this video and music and don't forget to subscribe for plenty of more videos to come.